Welcome back to On The Beat. Isaac hosting again this week. I have with me Drs. Hurd and Johnson back with me with Gastroenterology Associates, Columbus and Starkville. We've got a new topic this week. Doctors, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks absolutely. For us. Thanks for having us. All right, us. perfect. So PPI, you were just telling me this is Prilosec, but also what does it actually stand for? Yeah, it's a proton pump inhibitor. Okay. So that's uh, Prilosec, Nexium, Mass Effects, uh, Protonics, all of those a lot of the over-the-counter, not all of the over-the-counter acid reflux medications. That okay, so that's that's basically what they are. They prevent acid reflux disease. Yeah, or so treat it or I mean, not to get too much into the science of it, but a proton is acid. So if you block protons, you're blocking acid. I see. Way. That seems like a bad thing, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So what is the best you know way to to take these medications, um, Dr. Johnson? Well. The way we, we see a lot of people come to us with heartburn and acid reflux symptoms, and that's the primary reason that people are taking these medicines is for treatment of GERD and heartburn and acid reflux, et cetera. And so we'll see sometimes people come in that are taking these medicines already, but they're not really working as well as they would like or they're having breakthrough symptoms. So it's really important with the way that these work that people take them first thing in the morning on an empty stomach as soon as they wake up and, and wait at least 30 to 45 minutes before they eat or drink anything other than water. Okay. And that helps to get it in your system and starts to block these acid pumps that Dr. Hurd was talking about. Because if you eat or drink too closely to taking this medication and those acid pumps get to turning out acid, these medicines don't so, do so well at turning those off. They really work more to prevent them from ever turning on. So that's why it's really important to take it on an empty stomach. Okay, and maybe a follow-up. So uh, would you recommend uh, patients or people take these just kind of on a whim, or should they maybe come see y'all first? Well, you know, it's to each his own. I mean, some yeah, people yeah. will take them on their own they find them over the counter and that's probably sure. fine if you take it for you know a little bit and it helps your symptoms and it's pretty classic heartburn symptoms it's probably reasonable to do that but I think anybody who has persistent symptoms or it's not responding that would be yeah I agree see us. Uh, you know on a whim so the way you don't want to take it is I go you know eat tacos and my heartburn comes on and know I'm gonna go pop uh, a, a prilosec. A prilosec. Sure. it's not gonna work it's not right. gonna do anything that way the medicine has to be in your blood when you activate those proton pumps in your stomach to block. If you do that right, it'll block them for 24 hours. Yeah. And okay. so you don't, a lot of people have nighttime mm -hmm. symptoms. If they would take it right, it will also work for their nighttime symptoms. So he mentioned Tums and Rolaids, and that's actually a good point for us to get in an interview because people who truly have acid reflux almost invariably are going to have a good response to Tums and Rolaids. Like okay. that helps us yet confirm, yes, this is probably acid. And it may not be a sustained response. They take it and their acid gets better. So if somebody is having frequent heartburn symptoms or having to take a bunch of Rolaids and it helps them, then taking a Prilosec daily would probably do better to prevent those symptoms from ever occurring. Okay. And then so says, say the box says, take it for this X amount of time. Should we take it longer, shorter? I mean, I'm assuming it's printed for a reason, so yeah. maybe you should follow it exactly, or maybe not. Yeah, you know, if you're taking these over the counter, then you probably should follow kind of what the box says. If you, and I think usually it's a, what, a two week course yeah, or something, something like that. But if you start needing it more than that, that probably is something you should run by us because there are long-term risks to using these medicines. If you use them, you know, for 20 years, every single day, and we need to discuss risk versus benefits. Sure. Yeah. I think that's one of the reasons we wanted to bring this up is we do see a lot of patients who come in and ask about the risks of these. Maybe they were taking them for certain reasons that they needed them and then they quit taking them and now all of a sudden their heartburns come back or they started developing stomach ulcers again uh, because there's been a lot of media attention placed on the risks of these. And while they, there may be some risk associated with them, that d data is still kind of out. We're not 100% certain that it what does. What would be an example of a, of a long-term risk and continuing on maybe when you don't need to, I guess? Yeah. Uh, so there's increased risk of infection. There's some suggestion of heart problems, kidney problems, early onset dementia. So some things that sound really scary, but right now the evidence for that's pretty weak. Okay. It's I tell people if, if you have a reason to take it and, and it helps you, then the benefits outweigh any of those minimal risks. All right, well, good advice there, doctors. We sure appreciate your time this afternoon. If you have any additional questions or need any additional information, the uh, stuff you need there, information uh, is listed there on your screen. We'll be right back.